House Jack, I stand with Ray Fisher was trending tonight because, according to Twitter, Ray Fisher confirms that his character Cyborg is being removed from the Flash and details the ways he believes DC Films President Walter Hamada persisted in trying to minimize and dismiss the situation related to the in investigation into conditions on the Justice, on the Justice League set. And here's a tweet from from the cyborg guy himself, who tweeted, "Please read A over E." He says that yeah, I have received official confirmation that Warner Bros. Pictures just has decided to remove me from the cast of The Flash. I strongly disagree with their decision, but it is one that is unsurprising. Despite the misconception, Cyborg's involvement in The Flash was much larger than a cameo, and while I do mourn the loss of opportunity to bring Victor Strong back to the screen, bringing awareness to the actions of Walter Hamada will prove to be a much more important contribution to the world. On December 30th, 2020, I made it clear that I cannot, live a clear conscience, participate in any production associated with the current president of DC Films, Walter Hamada. The reason behind that declaration was twofold. One, Walter's purpose and attempt to undermine the Justice League Justice League investigation in order to protect his friend and former co-president Jeff Johns. Two, Malter's attempt to protect himself by contributing to the public dissemination of lies and misinformation about myself and the Justice League investigation in Warner Bros. Pictures is their first statement to the rap. Bear in mind, Walter Hamada interfering with the Justice League investigation is a completely separate issue than the investigation itself. And while Walter's behavior was not a point of focus for the investigation of the Justice League research, his dangerous and inhaling actions during the investigation process must be called to account. On July 7, 2020, during the 57 minute long phone call with Walter, I made multiple attempts to have him escalate my claims of misconduct against Jaws Whedon, Jeff, Jeff Johns, and John Berg, who would be proper chefs, rather than escalate the situation when, when initially asked. Walter disparaged John Wien and John Berg in an attempt to cover for Jeff Johns. And I learned Walter that Jeff was, in fact, a major contribution to the issue's experience, including blatant racism. Walter tried, but to no avail, to get me to reveal the names of the witnesses and other specifics that could be used to dismiss certain claims of mine as untrue because of his work experience and personal relationship with Jeff. Walter indicated that he was briefed on John Weenan's problematic behavior well in advance of my speaking on July 1st, 2020. That briefing likely came from Jeff Johns, with whom Walter served as co-president of DC Films. Regardless of how he was made aware, Walter knew that he was, that there he was, legitimately to, fly, to my claims against John Whedon. Yet he persisted in trying to minimize and dismiss the situation, claiming that it was the producer's job to protect the director and that he was looking for, to move beyond anything to do with Zack Snyder's Justice League. It wasn't until I argued Walter found that he agreed to escalate my claims as ass, citing it above his pay grade. Knowing that he 
that he had overstepped and that I have no intention of backing down. Walter made matters worse by making a tasteless self-aware joke about not wanting me to put him on Twitter about this. Well, here we are. Despite Walter's best efforts, the Justice League investigation was able to expose the racist co-serve discriminatory and retaliatory behavior of Jeff Johns during his tenure with Warner Media's affiliates. It has also led to the more immediate part parting of ways between Warner Media and Jeff Sweet. While it may be legally and financially safer to quietly praise Jeff Johns out or to let Joss Whedon exit, quote unquote, out of his own accord. I never, I shared neither of those responsibilities. My responsibilities are and have been one to protect, to try to protect those who were brave enough to lend their voice to the Justice League investigation. Two, to use what little power I possess to ensure that the workplace behavior exhibit during the Justice League research and its investigation never happens again. No one in any profession should have to argue with their employee for their claims of abuse, racism, and discrimination to be taken up to the proper chain of command. And no one in any position of leisure should attempt to dissuade those wishing to reinforce such claims from doing so. Malthus' actions and transformed this narrative from an investigation of onset misconduct in 2017 to the examination of the present day cover of culture hype. His contribution to Warren Bros. Fitcher's September 4th statement to the rap was false, cowardly, and reckless. I maintain that Walter Hamada is unfit for precision of leadership, and I am willing at any point to submit a to a polygraph test to support my claims against him. I don't know how many instances of workplace abuse Walter has attempted to cover in the past. Hopefully, the Justice League investigation will be the last. And the end, if the end of my time as cyborg is the cause for helping to bring awareness to the account and accountability to the to Walter Hamada's actions. I'll pay gladly. Onward, gratefully, Ray A. And here he puts a quote from Marnie to Mobley, which says, You reach a point in life where you simply must take a stand. Alright, so that's probably the entire letter. That was kind of a long read. The text was very small, but glad I could probably read, I guess. Anyway, though, I am very disappointed that, uh, that Walter Hermana is the cause of this issue. And from a guy who plays Cyborg, you know, I come I kinda of sit I'm just kinda of disappointed that that cyborg will no longer be in any of these films because of Walter Hermana. And that's because 
Walter Hermana couldn't step down as the president of DC Films. Two years ago, he was appointed as the president of DC Films. Not two years ago, scratch that. Three years ago, he was appointed the president of DC Films at Warner Bros. Pictures. And it's such a surprise to me that this guy, who's practically born in Hawaii, would probably be uh, a little bit racist towards uh, one of the greatest actors who ever played Cyborg. As of six hours ago, has decided to nuke his own career because of Walter Hermione's actions. Who, who clearly isn't capable of fixing the situation. So, how did this all start, you might ask, when Walter Hamada did all of this? Well, in order to get, get to where we are now, we have to look back on Hamada's career, which says in Wikipedia that he began his career as an assistant at TriStar and became vice president of production at Columbia Pictures. In 2007, he joined New Line Cinema, a division of Warner Bros, where he served as a production executive for over a decade. He oversaw the Horror State slate of films with date news for, including the Conjuring series and it. He also co-wrote the story for 47 Ronin, a Universal Pictures film starring Keanu Reeves. About 11 years later, in January 2018, after Justice League underperformed critically and commercially, Warner Bros. appointed Hermana as president of DC Films. He oversees production of the DC Extended Universe and other DC based films. According to Hollywood Reporter, his overseeing of the DC Films is such a sh- sh- sham and a new line impressed Toby Emmerich that then. President and Chief Content Officer of Warner Bros. Pictures. All right. All right. So this is from January fifth, two thousand twenty-one, which is not too long ago. It's like oh, about a week ago at, at least. And says Walter Hamada reups deal as DC Films president. Walter Hamada has signed a multi-year deal extension to remain president of DC Films in Sire Stelvari. The extension is through 2023 when individual familiar with talks noted. The studio is announcing the deal intimately. Hamada will t- continue to report more. To Warren Bros. Pictures Group Chairman Toby Emmerich. The label is responsible for bringing all of DC's superhero canons to screens and s- streaming, including the recent Christmas Day release, Wonder Woman 1984. Amount of joint DC films 2018 coming from Warner's new lines and where he served as an executive 
produce the vice president of production. In late December, he described an ambitious amount of theatrical movies, plans, and stream spin-offs based on marquee characters including Batman, Superman, The Flash, and fan favorites like Batgirl and Sist and Static Shock. Walter is not only passionate about the story and a DC canon, he's also a thoughtful and incredibly talented executive who is fully committed to investing the time and care necessary for movie making on this scale, said Image. With Walter overseeing our DC movies for year called Exhibition and on H HBO Max, we are excited for him and his team to bring more of these stories to life. Marky, the new and established talented to broaden the reach and diversity of the DC cinematic universe. Okay, so I can see why they were trying to go with this. And Sarna, chair and CEO of Morning Studios and Networks Group, says Sarna is an incredibly talented, well respected executive known by his colleagues and our filmmakers as a great collaborator. I'm excited about where he's taking DC films and look forward to working with him and the rest of the team to build out DC all time universe. Ma's extension is an indicator, and his longtime colleague, Boz Emmerich, who used to run New Line, trusts his stewardship of DC films moving forward. Ma is seated in former DC heads Jeff Johns and John Berg, both now producers, pulling hits like Aquaman and New Line's upstart Shazam. From a lackluster unit relaunch that was meant to compete with Disney's Mighty Marvel. The decision was thrust into the spotlight last summer <coughs> after just the star Ray Fisher accused that the film's director, Josh Wien, of unspecified misconduct. Warner Media conducted an investigation into the matter after Fisher went on went public on Twitter in July, which concluded last month and resulted in re-meaning action, the street spokesperson said at the time. Amano was not the head of DC Films during production or release of Justice League. Amano spent a decade of new lives <clears throat> in various roles. His notable hits include several titles in The Conjury, Final Destination, and Emma franchises. Previously, he spent four years as a partner at the management and production company H2F Entertainment and had the de development from MBST Entertainment. He began his career at the Sony Pictures label TriStar, eventually graduating to vice president of production of at Columbia Pictures. And I think that is it. So that's probably that's probably where I might stop. I don't know what Walter Hermione's deal is, but there's one thing that is most likely pretty clear to me is that Ray Fisher calls out on Walter Hermione and how He, uh, like, handled this situation very poorly. And I know how Walter Homada can still have a job and not 
be able to handle it in the most correct way possible. In my opinion, what I think Warner Media should do probably is to, or at least Warner Bros. What I think they should do is to fire Walter Hamada because it's kind of clear to me that Walter Hamada might be good at making money because that's his job, but he's not really good at, at his job in general. I don't think he's likely the right fit for it, since uh, Well, let's just say that uh, Walter Hamad might be might be the type of guy who has a history of uh, basically being a racist. I'll just put it out there. Because clearly he can't he can't see that. And all he wants to do is just make money. And, you know, probably torture a black person, which I'm glad Ray Fisher will not be participating in any production associated with Walter Hamada. Because of that particular reason, I think that more, sh more people should come out and do the same thing so that WB can fire Walter Hamada. If they fire Walter Hamada, then probably Ray Fisher will go back to participating in all productions of of any WB film, which includes the Justice League one. I hope that Walter Hamada that Walter Hamada's time cuts way shorter than to what he originally uh, is supposed to stay for, which is 2023, which is only two years away. I hope that Walter Hamada steps down as well if the people at WB aren't gonna fire him, then Walter Hamada should probably step down. Because I really don't think that this guy is up for the job after what he did. According to Ray Fisher. Which is why it's kind of dangerous for 
him to be there while Walter Hamada is around doing this. <laughs> 